Good afternoon, all. On behalf of IoT Academy, we welcome you all for the third session of National Level Faculty Development Program on Personality Development for Teachers in HEIs. Let me introduce the resource person of today's session, Dr. Maitreyi Goldakorti. Dr. Maitreyi is currently working as an Associate Professor of English, SRK Institute of Technology, Andhra Pradesh. Her qualifications include MPhil from Bharatidasan University, PhD from Indira Gandhi National Open University, and postgraduate diploma in te teaching English from English Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. She has 16 years of multi level teaching experience, comprising school, intermediate, graduate, and postgraduate levels in both technical and non technical institutions. She serves as a resource person in numerous student teacher training programs and participates in paper presentations and has a few publications in national and international journals. She also takes an active part in organizing academic, literary and cultural events, coordinating in different committees and institutional magazines. We welcome you, ma'am. And with this, we hand over the session to Dr. Maitreyi. Ma'am, please. Thank you very much for your kind words. Now, let me start my presentation. Today, our topic is professional ethics. I think this uh, has been recently taught a lot because professional ethics now has become a mandatory subject in almost all higher learning institutions. So, that is why it is very important for us to know and increase our awareness about professional ethics. Now, ethics is something which we all know to some extent because it's a general topic. But still, we need to know more about this in order to teach. So not only just teaching, ethics also helps us to become a better person, to have a better life, to excel in our profession also. So that is why. This topic, I think, is very important right now. Let us move on to the next slide. The contents of my presentation are introduction, examples, key differences, types of ethics. Yes? Uh, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Can you present using a uh, slideshow mode, full screen mode? Full screen mode. Sli okay. Slideshow mode. Okay, just a second. From the current slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Is it yes, good? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So, the contents of my presentation are first, we'll start with introduction. Then, I'll give you a few examples about professional ethics. Then, we'll discuss the key differences in few phrases to understand really what is ethics. And then we'll try to see how many types of ethics are there. And the next one is the importance of ethics, why it should be learned, why it should be taught, both. And then ethics for our profession, because all of us are teachers. So I would like to talk about how ethics will help us in teaching profession to become better teachers. And then uh, after that, we'll discuss a few challenges that are faced by the teachers in adopting ethics. Always there will be some problems, isn't it? Whenever we start to do something new, definitely challenges will come up. But we also have to find solutions to those problems. And those solutions are clearly seen in the strategies to improve our professional ethics as well as professional performance, both. Okay. Now, let us start with the introduction part. Now, the origin of professional ethics. The word ethics is derived from two languages. Actually, the word ethics is an English word, but it is originated from both Greek and Latin. In Greek, there is a word called ethos. Ethos means character. And in Latin, there is a word called more. More means morals, customs. So ethics is a combination of both. Ethics is the combination of character and customs. 
both together form ethics so that is why the word ethics is taken from these two root words now what is the definition of ethics now in order to know the definition let us see the word itself professional ethics okay so let us understand what is profession first profession means any occupation for which you have to train yourself for which you have to have a qualification some training some experience all these three put together will become a profession okay and ethics as i told is a combination of both character as well as morals so what is professional ethics the ethics which are useful in a, a particular profession is called professional ethics each profession will have ethics whether it is for doctor or whether it is for actor or whether it is for business or teachers any kind even law any kind of profession it has ethics some ethics are common to all professions but some ethics are particular to one profession so we are going to see both okay now let us see the examples of ethics what are the examples these are the common things we talk about integrity morality principles honesty righteousness fairness responsibility conscience choice honor value all these things put together is called ethics okay ethics is improving ourselves to become better people now when we follow ethics we become better people and to become a better person we need all these things we need integrity we need morality we need some principles which we follow in life we need to be honest to our profession we need to be righteous we need to be fair minded means without any partiality we should accept responsibility and we should make right choices we should honor people we should value people we should have integrity means delivering what we have promised and above all we need to have conscience conscience means thinking of god thinking of the supreme power that also we should have now let us understand the key differences between morals and ethics now i told you the word ethics comes from morality and character isn't it so mostly people uh, use them interchangeably they they think that morals and ethics are same but actually no because there is a slight difference there is some overlapping i agree but there is a slight difference between the both now what is morals and what is ethics morals is actually related to a person now when you say you are a moral you are moral it means it is your personal choice for example the religion we follow the culture we are born in all these things determine the morals the kind of family we come from see in in some communities eating certain food is correct eating certain food is wrong that is moral that is your personal thing some people follow some religion some people follow some other religion that is your moral it is personal whereas ethics ethics is common to the entire society a doctor should treat the student uh, uh, the patient a teacher should teach the student whichever community they belong to they should treat them doctors whichever community the student belongs the teacher should teach the same way that is ethics ethics is common to all whereas moral is confined to us it is about our personal code of conduct okay so that's the difference now the next difference we have to understand is the difference between values and ethics now what are values we say human values isn't it now what are these values values are also based on morals they are like guidelines they show the way to us they motivate us okay 
But if you don't have values, nobody will punish you. But if you don't have ethics, punishment will be there. See, if a doctor neglects the patient, he can be challenged in a court. You can put a case on him, isn't it? Because he is violating the principle of ethics. Whereas if a doctor takes more money, that means he doesn't have good value, isn't it? But still you can't put a case on him. Why? Because that is his choice. The values tell us that we should be compassionate to people. But there is no one to punish if you don't have compassion, isn't it? I, I suppose you know the difference. Value is something which will guide you in the right direction. But there is no compulsion to values. It is up to you. It is your personal choice. But whereas ethics, if you don't follow, you can be punished. Somebody can put a case on you. So that is the difference between values and ethics. Now, there is always a very big discussion that goes on in academic circles to determine whether uh, professional ethics is an art or a science. Uh, what would you say? Anybody from the audience? Would you call professional ethics an art or a science? Anybody, please? Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Both. Yeah. Both. Uh, it is not uh, art, it is also science and art. Yes. Both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Both. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, are yeah, both. Dr. Yeah. 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 Yes. It, it, it is a science. It is a science. Why do you think it is a science, sir? Uh, it, it, it will be proven. Yes. It will be punishable. Yes, correct. It is science because it is practical. It can be proven. Very good. Very correct. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you madam. Now, somebody said it is an art. So can they give me a reason why it is an art? Yeah, because uh, professional it is uh, related to social uh, situations to, to the uh, prejudice and uh, what are the common beliefs and uh, mm. also depends the history and social sciences. Uh, so I yes. yeah, thank you, man. You are absolutely correct. That is also correct. It is also an art because it is closely related to society and following ethics differs from person to person. See, all of us are not 100% ethical, isn't it? Somebody is 90%, somebody is 80 somebody is 70 60 like that. So that is why it is art because you cannot calculate it completely. So it is art. But it is practically applicable, it is punishable. That is why it is science. So both it is. Professional ethics are both art and science together. In fact, many people call it practical science. OK, let us move on. Thank you very much. Now let us see the types of ethics. Now types of ethics, so many are there. So let us go one by one. First one is meta ethics. Now, what is meta-ethics? Meta-ethics means understanding ethics. See, most of us, I think, uh, all of us watch media, isn't it? We watch news, we watch programs on TV, on web series, all these things. Nowadays, we have many programs that concentrate on crime. OK, so many killings, serial killers, or horror mystery stories are shown, isn't it? Now, uh, in all these serials, we see the villain, the person who commits some kind of horrible thing. And the police will go and catch him, isn't it? Now, when the police go and catch him, in the meanwhile, there are many psychiatrists who study the mind of the killer. They say the killer is doing this because something happened to him as a child. Killer is doing this because he has some problem with children or some problem with women. Why? Because of some experience we ha he had previously. See, 
this kind of study is called meta ethics means trying to understand the how ethics work what is the reason behind something bad why people don't follow ethics why people follow ethics both both are studied by meta ethics so meta ethics tries to understand the human psychology behind ethics so that is meta ethics now next is professional ethics which is our uh, particular topic for this afternoon so i won't go into detail because the next part of my presentation will be dealing with that okay so now let us come to applied ethics what is applied ethics applied as the name itself suggests it is applied to something see when you apply ethics to medical profession you can apply ethics to environment you can apply ethics to uh, education you can apply ethics to law you can apply ethics to so many things so applying ethics to something is called applied ethics okay now next is bioethics now bioethics is very important nowadays why because bioethics deals with medical branch means creation of different medical technologies nowadays we are talking about cloning we are talking about um, uh, how we can um, uh, make uh, uh, human beings from embryo which is transplanted in somewhere else from one person they take the embryo and put it in another person they call it surrogacy isn't it now doing these things they have advantages they also bring some disadvantages they also bring some social problems and in the name of medicine sometimes the doctors may cross the line and do something really bad suppose you are cloning a bad person suppose you are cloning a dictator then that is not good for society isn't it so that is where bioethics come into play to determine how far this procedure is correct how far these procedures are safe for the society that is determined by bioethics now the next one is animal ethics animal ethics protect the rights of all animals how we should treat them with compassion how we should not be cruel to the animals how we should save them from getting exploited see we see many animals like elephants that are killed for tusks and uh, uh, lions and tigers that are killed for their skin so there are so many animals like this that are uh, poached and commercially killed for different kinds of things so to protect all these things we need to have animal ethics we need to have rules we have rules for conservation of animals isn't it now all those rules come under animal ethics now that next one is business ethics yeah business ethics i think most of us are very very clear about this because when we do business see we have lot of advertisements isn't it in in most of the advertisements 90% of what they tell is simply not real because they just want to push the product so they give us so much of wrong information in the name of business so business ethics sees how far this is going on and sometimes in business they put us wrong figures in the market to get share values and sometimes in business they make some kind of uh, um, they will manipulate the accounts or uh, the money or the returns or anything that now all that comes under business ethics we need to have healthy practices otherwise many people's money property will come under danger and we see so many cases isn't it where people get cheated because of some schemes business schemes and all those schemes come under bad business ethics so it is very important to have strict rules in business to protect people's properties now next is computer ethics computer ethics also is very important see uh, nowadays everything is online isn't it our aadhar cards all these things are online so somebody can easily take this 
information and use it from some other bad purpose. See, there is a lot of security challenges that are there in computer field right now. Information, stealing information, stealing identities are very common nowadays. And we also see so many online scams, isn't it? Where money is taken from people without their knowledge, their money is gone. So all these things come under computer ethics. We need to have strict laws to protect people's identities, to protect people's online finances, and not just finances. Sometimes even Facebook and all, they hack the accounts and they take private pictures and put them on internet or, uh, or simply they will uh, blackmail people. See, all these come under computer ethics. We need to have strict rules for these kind of crimes. They are called cyber crimes. And nowadays, there is a lot of awareness on this also. And last but not the least, environmental ethics. Yeah, we need to follow ethics in environment also. Because all of us have only one planet to live. We don't have a second Earth. We have only one Earth. So we need to protect this Earth. We need to be more conscious about climate we need to be conscious about environment and how uh, we need to recycle so that there will be less usage of resources we should not overuse the resources on earth we should not create problems for the upcoming generations so all these come under environmental ethics so these are the types of ethics that are there now let us understand the importance of ethics why ethics are important as i told you ethics is 50 percent personal 50 percent communal so ethics will help you grow as a person yes but ethics will also help you to build a good society because if there are so many good people definitely there will be a better society isn't it so that is why developing ethics is very important. And ethics should be developed continuously in the society. So why ethics are important? First thing is they will increase your credibility as a person. Now, if you are ethical, definitely people will believe you. You will have value and you will have respect within your peer group. Definitely. A person who is ethical is always considered a leader isn't it see i think all of you are uh, familiar with abraham lincoln isn't it he was called honest abe when he was a teenager why because he was very impartial as a person so anybody in it seems anybody in the village if they had a problem they went to him because he always gave judgment impartially that is why he was called honest abe so like that, ethics will give you a leadership position. See, taking leadership is one thing. Being given leadership is something different, isn't it? See, when you have ethics, people want to follow you because they will see you as a leader. Next is decision making. If you have good ethics, you will make right decisions. See, if you have ethics, that means you are not greedy, you are not selfish, isn't it? Then definitely the decisions you make will help not just you, but everybody around you. Now, such decisions are always welcomed by people. If you're trying to do good to others, definitely they will welcome you. And next, if you have good ethics, you can create a healthy work environment. See, mostly work environments are polluted because of unnecessary competition. Good competition is OK. We need to have, we need to challenge one another. Yes, but it should not become ugly. It should not become something bad. So that is why in order to have good environment, we need to have good personal ethics. And next, definitely, if you have ethics, if all people are ethical to a great extent, definitely we will achieve a very peaceful society. So in order to build a peaceful society, we need ethics. Now let us see the next part. Now I'll come to the core part of our presentation, which is professional ethics for teachers. Now, since this program is 
talking about higher education i try to give ethics that are useful only for teachers teaching in higher education institutions but since teaching is common on basic level to all levels some of these will be applicable even to the other levels of education but i put my focus more on higher education institutions i think the audience will understand that thank you very much now let us see the ethics for the teachers the first ethic that we should have is communication and communication everybody says we need to have communication skills we need to have communic everybody says that but what is communication communication is not just speaking communication is speaking in the right manner speaking in a way that you connect to people see some people if they talk they can make even two enemies compromise and talk some people if they talk they can turn two friends into enemies within 10 minutes so communication is a very very sharp tool i always tell my students communication is like a knife you can cut vegetables you can cut even necks so that is why I always use communication in a very very ethical manner use communication in a way that you build relationships you build trust you build a good environment through communication that is important and next is awareness awareness of what awareness of what you are supposed to do i whenever i take up teacher training whenever i try to teach the junior teachers we always have a short uh, as soon as the teachers join the college new ones we have a short kind of a camp for them for 6 days or 7 days we will make all the junior teachers come and attend teacher training and then i will give them all the awareness what they are supposed to do as a teacher see most of the uh, teachers nowadays they will join institution as soon as they finish studies brand new they will come they know the subject but sometimes they don't know what is expected of them they still behave like students even after joining college as a teacher so that they need to have a clear vision of what is expected of a teacher that is very important we need to be aware all teachers need to know what we are supposed to do we are supposed to teach we are supposed to learn the subject completely we are supposed to learn the subject in such a way that whichever doubt is posed we are able to answer okay so that is why awareness is very important what is expected of you what are you supposed to do what are your duties these things we should know and next multiculturalism now this is very important nowadays nowadays uh, in colleges we have students from different parts of the state sometimes even out of the state yes so that is why we have people from different cultures now whenever there is multicultural group we should be very careful we cannot talk whichever way we want we cannot make jokes on others a teacher should be very clear about it you cannot stereotype people you cannot say yeah this people they are like that that people they are like that that is wrong so multiculturalism respecting each and every community is very important understanding how each community works that is also important and we need to respect all communities all religions or regions everything we need to respect and we need to be always mindful keep that in mind that you should be a neutral person you should not support one group or the other you should be equal in with everybody and next is group dynamics group dynamics means a teacher should know how to work with the groups see each class i think all of you agree with me each class will have a group definitely some three four groups will be there in every class wherever you go that is very common because people always 
have that tendency we are social animals isn't it people are social animals we we want to live in groups so that is why a teacher should be able to balance all the groups in the class that is very important you should know how to handle each group and you should know how to prevent any kind of conflicts between the groups that also a teacher should be able to do and next is individual care yeah it, it is true people are in groups but we should remember they are also individuals so that is why whenever you see a student who is not now this individual care is related to the next point discipline so whenever there is discipline problem with some students always please remember the root cause of the problem lies in the family or sometimes with the friends so instead of directly bombarding the student in front of everybody it is better we take them aside give them individual care listen to them that is very important listen to the student what he or she has to say what is the real problem which is making that student so indisciplined then you try to solve it then the student will start trusting you the student will start respecting you and the student will become a better person now naturally when he becomes a better person he will study well because he will be more responsible so that is why individual care and discipline are both related now next is learner centric see this is also very important this is also something we talk about in our teacher training it is not necessary for the student to know how good we are in our subject no see the subject knowledge that we have is something which is our property nobody needs to know that the student needs to know what is there in the textbook and how he can understand it how he can reproduce it in the exam that is important learner is important not teacher mostly people teach in such a way that they want to explain something in a very nice great manner no explain something in a manner where the student can understand come to his level and teach that is important it is not it is not necessary that you have to teach something very brilliantly no you have to teach something in such a way that even the most least num marks student also should be able to understand that that should be the target even the least knowledge person should be able to understand and write it in the exam if they are able to do that you are a good teacher that is important so always be learner centric and then updation this is also very important all of us we have our qualifications see we we do mphil we do phd we do um, uh, post graduate diplomas there is that everything we do we uh, we attend fdps all these things we do yes but but still we need to update ourselves always look at the books look at the media see how better i can teach this how better we can do this are there better methods to do this always constantly you update yourself because students are changing from each batch to the next batch students are changing isn't it the students the way we i taught before 10 years now i can't teach the same way because the students are not like that they have changed so my learning my teaching technique also changed so a good teacher always keeps changing according to the trends so that updation should be there and next of course commitment without commitment we cannot work isn't it we need to be committed yeah today by 3 months i should be able to finish this much of my syllabus yeah you are committed you should do it that is very important and next cooperation cooperation not just with the students cooperation with the colleagues is also very important we need to be cooperative with our colleagues we need to be cooperative with our superiors we need to be cooperative with the management we need to be cooperative with the parents 
so a teacher is like a bridge i think i always tell junior teachers we are like bridges we connect management parents students for everybody we are the central point we are the connect connecting bridge it's a great responsibility being a teacher is not easy please we have to always we can proudly say that teacher being a teacher is not easy because we are not doing one to one work from point a to point b people work no we work from point a to b c d e e f all those things we do because we work with our students we work with our parents we work with management we work with outside institutions who come and interact with us so we work with so many sets and kinds of people so that is why being cooperative is very important and next of course is time management that is very important isn't it see sometimes some teachers if the class is for 45 minutes they take 50 or 50 my 55 also sometimes it becomes a problem to others or sometimes some teachers if the class is for 45 minutes they will stop within 30 minutes and next 10 minutes they will leave the students and the students will create lot of noise which again will be a problem to everybody so as a teacher it is very important for us see if you are given a 45 minutes slot see to it that at least 43 minutes you teach last 2 minutes you can leave them but see to it that the entire class time is covered otherwise it will be waste of time for everybody and it will be a problem to everybody so time management is very important and some teachers they have the bad habit sometimes they teach the initial chapters first two chapters they will teach and over teach and over teach and the next chapters they will simply fly through because the exams are coming so they simply fly through the next three chapters now that is not correct when you are given five chapters give each chapter one week or 10 days depending on the schedule that you have plan your lessons in such a way that all topics are given equal focus and importance so that student will have time to absorb everything in their mind that is also important and next grooming as teachers we need to groom ourselves we need to present ourselves in a very nice manner see a student a teacher should always come well dressed we need not uh, buy and wear costly um, uh, clothes it's but we should be presentable we should wear whatever we wear how much ever it costs it should be neat it should be clean it should be presentable the student should get a pleasant feeling when they see us so that is very important we need not be stylish to our profession but we need to be respectable they should get the feeling that yeah she is my teacher or he is my teacher i should respect them like that they should feel and that is how we should present ourselves in a very simple and comfortable manner and next is openness now this is also very important for a teacher sometimes see uh, uh, some students are very brilliant they have a uh, 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 very uh, innovative minds and if such students are trying to talk and share some of their ideas you should be open and sometimes the students they will say madam is it like this or can it be like this don't be angry with them don't try to shut them down let them ask let them ask let them express last 5 minutes you give time to such things so that they will come openly and ask you doubts about different things and they also will feel that satisfaction yeah madam uh, cares for us she looks after for us and she gives us a chance to open up and speak the child will feel so encouraged by that and definitely they will start performing better they will start trusting us more so that is why we need to be open 
and next is loyalty loyalty is very important in the sense that loyalty towards the institution the where we are working we should be loyal to the institution we should be loyal to our profession and we should be also loyal to the students sometimes the students out of their trust out of their respect and love sometimes they tell us some very personal and important things because they want to share and it is our duty to protect those secrets we should not go around telling everybody yeah it seems that such and such thing happened to that no because we need to be loyal because when we protect them definitely they will trust us more i'm not saying we should protect uh, bad things definitely that much of uh, understanding everybody has isn't it now next is teamwork as i told you teamwork is closely related to cooperation teamwork we should be able to divide the class into teams whenever we do some practical assignments and work or sometimes when we have study hours we can divide the class into teams and make them work towards something and we should be able to understand and pick out the right persons to lead the team the team leaders are very important and we should um, select them correctly and we should assign them work and see to it that their work is done and next is dispassionate as i told you it is very very important for the teacher to be dispassionate you should never never show any kind of favoritism towards the students because that is something the student feels very hurt about when we show partiality to someone so the, the teacher should be very dispassionate the same kind of rules same kind of treatment to all the students should be given now the next one is ethics for teachers continuation creating a safe environment it is also very important see um, nowadays we have lot of problems regarding ragging we have lot of problems regarding eve teasing and such things so it is very important for the teacher to create a safe environment to show them that yeah if something happens i can approach my teacher and tell and she will or he will take care of that that kind of safety you should provide to everybody and multiple abilities now sometimes we have students who have problems uh, like uh, they are handicapped or sometimes they have problems writing sometimes they have problems speaking so there are different kinds of uh, abilities and disabilities in people so we should be very mindful about that usually what we do is uh, we have a system of uh, counselor counselor and the counselees so there will be a group of 20 students and for each 20 students we have a teacher assigned so whenever uh, we uh, talk with our group of students one on one i talk usually i i don't uh, address them together i'll just call them aside one by one and ask about their any kind of problems they have any medical problems any kind of family problems such things i make a note in a small book and keep and if they have learning problems that we can communicate with the teachers who teach the same uh, class suppose in a class is handled by six or five people you can tell those five or six teachers about what this boy or girl has like they have some learning ability disability or they have some problem with pronunciations they have some problem with calculations so in such cases we can pass this information to other teachers so that they can also focus on this and the student will be benefited more so like that we can help people with multiple abilities and disabilities both next is confidentiality i told you confidentiality means keeping secret see whenever the student trusts us and tells us something very deeply personal we should keep it a secret if it is a bad thing yes we need to report 
But if it is a good thing, if he has some problem, some people, they come from rural areas, they feel very shy to talk and come out and express themselves. So you should take them into confidence. And whatever problems they tell you should be able to solve them or show them a way which they can solve these things. Always I try to um, uh, select students who are uh, very uh, uh, courageous and uh, who are very outgoing. Such students, I pair them with these shy uh, students so that they will help each other. And slowly, they also get that confidence. And slowly, they also get uh, a, a, a pace with these others. They will be as good as others in a very short time. Because peer learning is also very important. We should encourage peer learning, learning from one student to the other. That also helps. Because peer example is very important. Because in, especially teenage, when the children are very young, they listen to their parents. They want to imitate them. When the children slowly become teenagers, then they want to listen to their friends a lot. So we should take advantage of that and see to it that the grouping and pairing of the students should be done in such a way that the other students, they can help each other. That is also very important. And next is parent management. See, uh, I don't know about other places, but in our institutions, uh, some of the parents, at least, they come from very interior village background. They don't have much awareness about studies. So it is very important for us as teachers to make them understand what is going on in the college. So that's why I keep uh, calling my 20 students' parents. So who, whichever group I get, those 20 parents I always keep in touch. Every uh, one, uh, one month or so, I keep calling and telling them about the progress of the student and try to discuss what is going on. You should make them a part of the team. Always make the parent your teammate. That helps, really. Then even the student will be more responsible because he knows that you're talking with the parent regularly. So there won't be any miscommunication and the student won't get a chance to give false information to the parent. Sometimes that also happens. Some, some kids are very naughty. So that is why we need to stop it in this way by making the parent as your team member. And next is employer management. This is also important for a teacher. We need to be management friendly, yes, of course. But we need to convince them regarding whatever uh, new things we are taking up. It is also very important, isn't it? Whatever updations that we are doing, whatever new schemes that we want to do with the students, it is always important to bring the management on the board so that there will be more help. So that in case the need arises, the management will support you and also ask the parent to support you. So that is why I told that the role of the teacher is very, very key because we are like the bridge that connects the parents, the management, and the student. We are the common point for all. So that is why managing parents on one side, managing students on one side, and managing management on one side. All three we should be able to do. And next is law abiding. This is also very important for a teacher. We need to follow the law. We cannot, we, whatever rules and regulations are there in the college, we should be the first ones to follow. Only then we can motivate our students to follow. If we are not following, we can't tell them, isn't it? So that is why it is important that first we follow what we are saying. Next is best practices. This is also something very easily adapted it can be adapted by anybody. See, what, what are the best practices? Sometimes, see, each batch we teach 
and sometimes some lessons i feel were very very beneficial to the students the students were able to understand and follow them very correctly such lessons and such activities so I, i always make a note in my book this was very successful with the students this strategy helped a lot so this is where uh, this best practices is linked to the point of reflection i think all of us uh, should i don't know how many of you follow it but i do it i have a small book which is meant for reflection so whatever good things that i was able to achieve with my students that year all those things i'll write in one page and what are the things that need improvement that also i'll write in one page for each batch i will write like that that is called reflection book all of us can do it and in that book you can write your best practices you can write the not so good practices both so that next year you do you will know what to improve and what is good that you can follow what is not so good you can improve that way each batch you can improve yourself that way we can become better teachers so that is also a part of our commitment to the profession and that is why that comes under professional ethics now next is style we need to develop a distinctive style isn't it style in the sense style of teaching try to incorporate things as much as possible don't be limited to the textbook i don't say leave the textbook no that is not correct we need to stick to the textbook but try to go beyond that because students like it i have seen with many batches whenever i try to do something that is not there in the text they will be extra motivated and there will be extra uh, kind of enthusiasm in them because they enjoy it they they think that yeah see she is giving us something beyond textbook so that is why develop your own style try to incorporate things suppose i see a, a youtube video i liked it a lot uh, and then i want to apply that technique in the in the college i'll do a small activity based on that people like it we should incorporate such things you should keep developing your style year by year it should become better and next good behavior of course all of us need to have good behavior with our colleagues with our students it is very important that we don't use bad words with anybody professionally it is very very important you should never use any kind of bad words no temperament you should be very neutral and you should be very dispassionate next is mal practice control now sometimes mal practices happen in everywhere in every institution and whatever rules and regulations we have regarding that we should follow them without any doubt next is co curricular activities yes this is also very important don't be limited to the textbook try to incorporate other activities try to make them present things especially in higher education institutions most of them have problems with campus placements because they don't do many activities as a student last somewhere they'll take training for a few days and go for interviews but if they start in the first year itself if they start doing activities definitely they will have very good chances when they go to fourth year so that is why it is very important to encourage students to participate in co-curricular activities now i'm i'm not talking about extracurricular because that comes under pt and all those things that is different but we need to encourage students to participate in all kinds of activities don't let them sit with only books try to involve them in as many things as possible because when you give them a chance to participate in many things you will develop them on all sides they will be more confident they will be more focused and they will be spending their time in good things so that is why encouraging co curricular is very important and constructive criticism this is also important for us 
see sometimes i have observed that some teachers they don't feel happy when students um kind of uh, tell madam this might not be correct or madam this is not there why are you telling this some some students have that habit they simply want to ask and see how you will react they do that some of them are like that so we should be able to handle it with a smile there is no use getting angry with such people because it will simply create problems for everybody so instead of that handle it with a smile and make the student realize his or her mistake and that you have you should you can do it only through practice so i leave that to your imagination now let us see the challenges for the teachers now uh, when we follow ethics usually challenges come up sometimes it is lack of cooperation sometimes we don't get the cooperation of the management sometimes we don't get cooperation of the our fellow students or some i mean fellow teachers or sometimes we don't get the cooperation of the students but we need to solve these problems through creatively communicating with others next is lack of training sometimes the training is not given to the teachers and because of that ethics suffer so that is why the teachers should be trained not only in teaching but also in ethics both training should be given to the teachers and next lack of time now this happens i think almost always isn't it we have very less time and we have lots of portions to finish and then uh, the uh, the ethics are very challenged isn't it you you don't know how to finish so people will find their own ways now that should not be the case however much time we have i think correct planning will help with lack of time if you are able to plan well that lack of time can be solved and next different learning needs see students have different types of learning needs or uh, some students respond well to uh, uh, listening tasks some students respond well to teaching tasks some students respond well to seeing uh, ppt slides or something so depending on that i am not saying you have to uh, cater to each individual no what we can do is one day you can have a listening task one day you can have a ppt so in that way you can fulfill the need of everybody next lack of infrastructure yeah this is the problem with many institutions they don't have good equipment they don't have uh, but we cannot solve that it is very difficult for a teacher to get equipment isn't it but what we can do is whatever we have the best equipment as uh, one professor said the best equipment you can have is blackboard so you try to use whatever equipment you have to the best of your ability too many responsibilities yeah this also happens in many institutions one teacher will be made responsible for four or five things and it becomes difficult and if it becomes difficult the next thing happens burnout the t the person will get so tired the person will be so demotivated by it so this is also a challenge lack of parent support sometimes the parents will not support limitations in disciplining sometimes uh, we are not able to uh, discipline students because the management may not cooperate or the parents may not cooperate such things can happen so how can we improve we can create a good ambience see try to see when you are peaceful and when you project that peacefulness to others you can create a good atmosphere promote harmony wherever we go we should try to join people we should create peaceful environment encourage student participation that is very important and gamification you can uh, introduce small games into the class give them little bit of encouragement with one chocolate pen that is enough for them make it a kind of a game if you learn this i will give you th this reward so that kind of gamification also motivates the learners sometimes and target lessons for all abilities i have discussed this 
and try to understand the problems of the students. Don't always simply scold them. Try to listen what they have to say. Teamwork. And manage the teams correctly. And make students responsible for something. They love it, really. Educate stakeholders. As I told, take parents into your confidence. Make them your team members. OK, so the time is also over. So any queries for me? The session is open for discussion now. You can unmute and interact with the resource person, or you can post your queries in the chat box also. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes. Yes, anybody, any questions? I'll be happy to answer. Any question regarding ethics, teacher training, anything? It need not be just ethics. Uh, Ma'am, uh, very good evening. This is Sujata, Assistant Professor Psychology. Nice to meet you. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, very practical and a very, very informative session. Thank you for the session, Ma'am. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah, uh, Ma'am, this is regarding the professional ethics that we were talking about. Yes. Some sometimes it's very very. I, mean, I am especially finding finding it very difficult to balance because many a times we 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 the boundaries that we have between uh, professionalism and personal when we work together. So yes. how do I maintain it? Uh, can you tell me? Is it a social problem or a behavior problem or? It's it's it is starting as a behavioral problem, but mm. ending ending as a social problem. Is it with your colleagues? Yes, obviously. Yes. Then uh, I would suggest that first you try one on one approach. Try to talk it out with that person. Okay. I would do that if that is not possible. If you are not able to uh, make any kind of communication with that person. Try to find the person who can influence that troublemaker. Okay. He will, he or she will have some friends, no? Yeah. You try to contact them. You try okay. to tell that person through them that this is the problem. Okay. okay. Huh. I would really want you to do that because if you go and talk to superiors, it will create a lot of ugly feelings. Yes, yes. That is what I have observed. Usually, when you go and complain about somebody to your superior, immediately that person will start creating problems for you. OK. So it's better you approach directly to the person or to the friends or whoever can influence that person. You take them into confidence. You try to talk it out. Because always open communication solves problems. Yes, yes, ma'am. OK, I, 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 I so hope much. I'm able to help. Yes, yes, yes. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Yes. Anybody else? Any problem? Any other queries? Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. Good afternoon, yes. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you are audible. Please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My small query. What is the difference between we, uh, uh, between the ethics and integrity? It is the part of uh, one another. And sometimes another query, uh, ma'am, uh, that uh, I have uh, uh, feel that uh, some some ethics are overlapping, like communication ethics and professional ethics. And so uh, how do we categorize the types of uh, ethics? Uh, so that's not query, man. Thank you. OK. Uh, voice was not very clear. But what I have understood was you want to know uh, the difference between integrity and ethics. Yes. 
integrity is one of the quality which is a part of ethics but integrity is more comes more under morality than professional ethics in professional ethics integrity should be there but integrity is a personal thing your professional integrity is your personal thing okay but professional integrity is also there professional integrity means being true to your profession see we are teachers so being true to our profession means we should completely devote ourselves to teaching first other things later i'm not saying uh, we should not do other things because we are made to do other things we become counselors also we become uh, uh, pr also sometimes for our institutions we do so many things in different capacities but our basic professional integrity is teaching and our basic uh, um, whatever focus we should have is on our student student comes first uh, rest all come later that is professional integrity as a teacher now professional integrity as uh, uh, a teacher is something different from integrity as a person integrity as a person comes under morality how truthful you are how nice you are how cooperative you are all those things come under your personal feelings so there are two types of integrity professional integrity and personal integrity i think you are able to understand the difference yes yeah ma'am clear very very clear thank you ma'am thank you thank you any other queries please madam namaste namaste myself dr m s anmuthi i am the principal and associate professor of ushoday master of education college okay nice to meet you sir thank you madam uh, i am the teacher educator oh oh very nice it, yes it, it is very useful to our students yes yes uh, if it is possible if it is possible uh, please send uh, your ppt it is very excellent ppt to my mail address madam yes i think uh, the academy people can help I'm you with that ppt okay ma'am i have i have already noted in a chat box madam okay okay madam thank you excellent okay. session madam it is very useful to my uh, thank profession you. thank you thank you thank you madam my pleasure nice. my pleasure okay. any other queries i think there are no more queries ma'am shall we hand up now okay sure sure on behalf of iot academy we thank dr maitreyi ma'am for the informative informative interactive enlightening and interesting session thank you once again for the amazing and excellent presentation ma'am it was an amazing session it will be a memorable session for all of us and if your speech was really stimulating we thank you very much for your efforts ma'am i thank all the participants who joined the session today kindly submit the feedback form in the link that has been posted in the chat box thank you all have a great day thank you ma'am we thank you very much for your efforts ma'am it was thank an amazing you session. thank you academy you have given me choice uh... this is the third time i think i am teaching uh, i have gave a session for iot academy i'm very thankful to the management of iot and i'm very thankful to each and every participant who listened so patiently to this speech thank you very much you're welcome ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you madam thank you thank you thank you